We are coming up to interview season for PhD prospective students. So in this video, I'm going to share my tips and tricks on how I prepared for my interview at the University of Cambridge for my PhD in public health and primary care. I should say that I have also created a video already on my channel which describes my experience of the PhD interview and the specific questions that I have asked. So if that is also of interest to you, then please feel free to check that out. I'll leave a link for that in the description of this video and I'll also remind you at the end so you don't possibly forget. But before we get into my top strategies for preparing for your PhD interview, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Cameron and I make student life videos, productivity videos and organisational videos. So if that is your jam, then please consider subscribing because it is free and you can always change your mind at a later point. And enjoy the video. So. I've moved. Let's start by discussing what actually happens at a PhD interview because I think that's really important to discuss. Most PhD positions will have an interview that lasts for around about 30 minutes and this allows for your prospective university and of course your supervisors to discuss your research interests with you, to discuss the project and just to discuss things with you in more detail. So they're going to ask you questions about your background, your career goals and the project itself. You might also be required to deliver a short presentation, which is what I had to do, and that often is how you start the interview. At least this is what I had. Presentation, then interview. It can vary from position to position. So most PhD positions and adverts in the sciences, medicine, engineering, are often project specific and follow a pre-designed set of aims and objectives. And they normally take place in a research group that's pursuing sort of more broader, wider goals, to which your PhD will make a small but very important contribution to. So an interview for one of these positions needs to ensure that you, the applicant, can complete this project and demonstrate to the supervisors that you've got that you deserve the funding for it. You can also write a research proposal, which is slightly more common if you do a PhD in the humanities, but we'll get into that another time. So, how did I complete mine? How did I prepare? Ugh, well it was a lot of work, that's for sure. And it's just the interview. God, you don't want to be spending that much time on it, surely. So my PhD position fell into this sort of predefined category where there was a pre-designed project and I was working as part of the Can Risk project, which is all about breast cancer risk prediction modelling. And this is a subject that is very new to me. I previously worked with truck drivers, cardiovascular health, and with mobility impairing conditions like with Parkinson's disease. So making sure that I had a really solid understanding of the CAN Risk project was extremely important. So how did I do this? When you are invited to an interview, you usually have the names of the panelists that will be interviewing you. And quite often these will be your supervisors or at least one of your supervisors and then two other people that are in the broader team. So one day I took a lot of time to read through all of the papers that I could find where these people on the panel were named as the primary author. So the first author that appears when you look up a paper on the internet or in a journal. And what I would do is I would make a note of the aims and objectives, the methods, the analysis tools, the results. So I was sort of creating like a mini abstract. And the idea was that on one A4 page, I would have two studies as part of that. So one half would be one study, one half would be the other. So it was nice and concise and easy for me to understand. And this way I could have a really nice clear picture of the kind of work that my supervisors were doing and consequently the kind of work that I would be doing as well. Because after all, you are 100% going to be asked about the project that you're going to be working on. So if you can mention a couple methods that might be relevant, a paper that interested you and why, this can really go a long way to showing your supervisors that you're really interested in the project. So taking the time, spending a day on just reading as many papers as you can by the panellists is extremely important for your success. So we've touched on your supervisor's research, but what about your own? You've clearly done some things and you're obviously going to be asked about your experience as well. And a PhD is designed to be this multi-year training opportunity, usually three to four years. However, there will probably be an expectation that you have at least conducted some research at undergraduate level or at postgraduate level, or perhaps in the workplace already. And obviously there's a very good chance that your interview are going to cover these and see if your experience is a good fit and also how relevant it is to the project. And also how clearly you communicate these to your supervisors as well in the interview. 
So what I did was I reread my dissertation that I wrote for my master's project at Newcastle University in public health. And the idea was that I would just familiarise myself with the methods I wrote about, the results that I produced. And the key aim of this was to make sure that I could explain this in as clear a way as possible to my supervisors so that they could understand it, but also so it made sense in my own head as well. And likewise, I also familiarised myself with other projects that I've been involved in, like the Structured Health Intervention for Truckers study that the brilliant team at Loughborough University have been working on tirelessly for the last number of years. And you won't be necessarily examined per se on this work, but it's obviously really important to get a clear idea on your head so that you can communicate this to your supervisors in the interview as well. And like any other interview that you do, brush up on your CV. Now your interviewers will likely have it to hand, and you should as well, bring a printout of it to the interview, whether it's on Zoom or in person, just so you can refer to it if you need to. But it's really important to study it meticulously. There is no worse feeling than when you have completed the interview, you're chilling out, you're having a good time, and then you go to bed and you wake up in a panicked sweat because you think that there is an answer that you could have given to a certain question that you didn't because you forgot because you didn't study your CV. So what I did was the night before the interview happened, I just had a quick look through my CV, spent about, I'd say, 10 minutes on it, just reading through what I'd done before, the things that I'd written out on it, the experiences that I've had, just so I, it was much more clearer in my head what I was doing. And this can really be just as important as understanding everything about the project that you're applying for. If you know everything about the project, but you don't necessarily show that you have these skills and experiences that can fit in with the project, why would they pick you. So just taking the time to brush up on your CV is really important and it's something that you should be doing just the night before. You don't need to spend too much time on this. And while I mentioned there that knowing everything about the research is important but not necessary, by the same token looking at other current research in the field makes a lot of sense. A PhD after all needs to be a totally unique piece of work. So what will be unique about yours? If you have taken a break from the field or aren't necessarily familiar with the research that you're getting involved in as part of the PhD, which is what I kind of had because I've never done breast cancer research before, then you should just read. <laughs> so the technique that I used was that I would go to the supervisors that were on the panel's work by clicking on their names, putting them into Google, searching up papers that they had produced, and then looking through the background section of any studies that they had been working on. And the idea was that in the background section, there are a lot of relevant references that you can have a look through as well that are probably closely tied to the project that you'll be working on. So having sort of a general understanding, not too specific of these, is important so that you can express these ideas to your supervisors so they can see, oh, you kind of know what you're talking about. Nice. Also, preparing questions that you might be asked is a really good idea and a really great strategy as well. There will be a number of questions that you will always be asked, and I've outlined a few of them in that video of my experiences of a PhD interview at Cambridge as well. But I'll go through a couple of them just so you have them to hand and you can start to think about these ideas for when you go into your PhD interview as well. The first of these which will always be asked is tell us about yourself. And that's actually asking about your academic and professional career rather than anything specific. I mean, hobbies are good to talk about and all, and you can maybe touch on them at the very end, but you should really be focused on your academic and professional achievements thus far. The other is why you want to do a PhD. You need to be able to express that to them because they want to know that you're in it for the long game. Next, why do you want to study at this university? Where do you see yourself five years down the line? And what are your three biggest strengths or weaknesses? And personally, I would always write down some answers to these questions because you will be asked them. One other technique that I'd also do is look at the PhD advert and note down all the key skills and terms that it mentions as part of the job description. So this can be things like communication or teamwork. So you might be asked a question like, can you tell me about a time that you used communication to solve a difficult task as part of a team? Ethics is also a really common subject that is talked about in research interviews. So again, this can be something as basic as, can you tell us about any ethical issues that there might be involved in doing this kind of research? So having a strong grasp of this is really important because it not only shows, you know, some things that you might be aware of of published materials, but it also gives them the chance to see if you've done any critical thinking yourself and thought about any issues with the type of research that they're doing. And of course, there are banks of questions on the internet that you can get asked in a PhD interview. So 
So just noting down some you might think are relevant or you might be asked and then writing down a clear answer for them is very important. And finally, practice. Make a list of questions for your friends or family to ask you and then give the answer to them in the exact same setting that you would be asked in the interview. So whether this is over Zoom or Teams, in person, have a friend or family member ask you those in the same setting. And it's such a simple tip and it's something that you should always be doing because it just makes you feel much more comfortable in the position that you will be going into in the interview so you can learn to control these feelings and emotions because you've already kind of had them in this sort of test setting. Obviously it can help with things like, you know, sweating and butterflies in your stomach and all that jazz. Feeling like you're on the brink of death during the interview but learning how to cope with these emotions sort of before the day is, you know, really important and can help you out a lot. And that's kind of it. Those are the things that I did to uh, prepare for my interview at the University of Cambridge. I do hope that it was helpful and eases your mind going into it. It is a really horrible thing to have to deal with. And preparing for something that you might not necessarily get can feel really counterproductive, but if you take the time to do all the things that I've mentioned in this video, then it can really increase your chances of success when you're doing the PhD interview itself. And if there is anything else that you would like to ask or anything that I haven't covered, or if you have any tips yourself that you might want to share with other people that are watching this video, then please put them in the comments below because it can be really helpful for everyone to see those experiences and ideas. And as a reminder, if you want to learn any of the questions and the answers that I gave in the actual interview itself, then there is a video for this on my channel and I'll probably put it in the description below, so please feel free to have a look at that as well. And of course, if you haven't already, then please leave a like on this video because it really helps and do consider subscribing because it is free and you can always change your mind at a later date. So thanks again, and I wish you the very best of luck in your interview. You've absolutely got this, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.